Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome back to another episode of Soldiers Talk, the podcast. I'm your host, Staff Sergeant McPherson, and on this show, we discuss military topics with current and prior service members. Today, uh, we are going, going to the third type of property, which is expendable property, and I'm going to be showing you guys, uh, going through the guys with through the regulation about accounting for expendable property. So, uh, we just can go ahead and get started. Okay, so we are still in seven, uh, chapter seven of AR 35 dash five, chapter seven dash six. It's talked about expendable property. So it says expendable property is property that is consumed in use or loses its identity in use. It includes items not consumed in use with a unit cost of less than $500. So anything less than $500. That's not consumed in use. It's not expendable. It's not durable. It would be expendable. So, and having a CIC uh, control item inventory code of uniform assigned. The following classes or types of property would be classified as expendable. Supplies consumed in the maintenance and upkeep of public service. Examples are oil, paint, fuel and cleaning and preserving materials considered expendable items items that lose their identity hold on uh where was that supplies that lose their identity when used to repair or complete other items example are assemblies repair parts and accessories Supplies consumed by government activities in the manufacturing, testing, sampling, or for experimental purposes. Also included are audiovisual products, training devices, training aids, and displays when these supplies will be consumed or rendered unserviceable for the purpose originally intended. Office supplies and equipment such as paper, staplers, and hole punchers with a unit cost of less than $500. Sub, substance, substance, sub, substance, subsistence items, subsistence items, commercial or fabricated items similar to items with the uh, ARC of X in Fed Log. Uh, like special tooling, jigs, fixtures, and templates provided. Like item is not available through normal supply channels. Items are fabricated for exclusive use by U.S. Army Joint Munitions Command depots and depot rebuild programs and cost less than $5,000 each. Class 5 ammunition with subclassification other than uh, Lima missile material, the item is expendable. All items class assigned to Class 1 subs subsistence, Class 3 petroleum oil and lubricants, Class 6 personal demand items, Class 8 Repair, I'm mean, class nine repair parts and assemblies. The item is expendable. So there you guys go. So any class three, class six, uh, class one, all of these are expendable items. Uh, all items with the unit price is less than $300. Item is expendable. All items assigned to these, uh, these regulations or classes the items is a component of a container the item is expendable all other flags pennant and other organizational colors national flags state flags positional colors the single flags are expendable that's crazy because i should have sworn like during the when we read about the uh non-expendable property it said okay so it's, it's a certain class okay So accounting for expendable property. Accounting for expendable property before issued to the user is the same as accounting for durable and non-expendable property. Expendable property authorized by mTOR or TDA and deployable or augmentation property authorized by CTA will be accounted for on the property book records, no matter the ARC, including all types of munitions. All other expendable property is considered 
for accounting purpose to be consumed upon issues. Consequently, no, no formal accounting of expendable property is required after issue from the SRA level to the user level. Some items, although classified as expendable, are such as nature to require additional supply and issue controls. Such controls, when needed, will be prescribed by the National Item Manager. Examples are shown below. Expendable items, component assemblies, repair parts, and accessories identified as recoverable or pilferable items. See AR 17-2. Drugs identified by the Surgeon General. Unden Undernature alcohol and alcoholic liquors. Food items at the dining facility. Bulk fuel sus subsistence, subsistence drawn for training, which is like MREs and stuff. When expendable tools are issued to the user, user issues will be controlled and responsibility assigned by using hand receipt, component hand receipts, tool room, or tool crib procedures. Expendable components of sets, kits, and outfits. Skull. Okay, the other skull. And end items will be controlled using component hand receipt when scope or end items are issued to the user level. Expendable hand tools issued by a tool room or tool crib become the personal responsibility of the recipient. The recipient is responsible for the return of the hand tool to the tool room or tool crib. When expendable hand tools are issued outside the tool room environment or not as a component of a score or end item, the recipient will acknowledge receipt in writing. Receipt may be a log or other locally development receipt will be retained for two years before destroyed these tools will be turned in upon the individual's departure facilities engineering supplies radio frequency tags items issued for the purpose of destructive testing and experiments will be accounted for as expendable property these items are that are issued to an army an army activity or a government laboratory for use in tests or experiments that will cause the items to be destroyed, made useless, or undergo identity change. An army activity for use as training aid devices or displays that will be consumed in writing with the understanding that when the items are no longer needed, they will be disposed of under current supply procedures. Private firms likely to become manufacturers or suppliers of equipment or equipment or to perform services under a contract with the army may be issued free samples on approval of procuring activities. Such items will be accounted for as expendable property. All items will be credited to the SRA on issue and no further accounting will be required. Reading authority for the transfer will be filed with the valid credit voucher. Any of the following consider a valid credit voucher receipt from a commercial carrier or transportation agency. Certificate signed by the accounting officer showing the date and place item were mailed. Receipt from an authorized representative of a private firm or organization. Fabricated items described in 7 6 Foxtrot will be accounted for as suspendable property. However, a control point will be established for fabricated items earmarked for reuse. Before fabricating a new item, a check of the control point for a like item already on hand will be made. So that's how you guys account for expendable property. So basically, expendable property is authorized by the MTO, a TDA and deployment augmentation property authorized by CTA will be accounted for on the property book records, no matter what it is. So they are some expendable properties that goes on the property book. That's what they're saying. Uh so I just basically explained to you guys what would be considered expendable property and how to account for expendable property, which you really don't account for expendable property uh, unless it's on a hand receipt. Um, unless it's on a hand receipt, you uh, hand receipt it to the, to the user or whoever signed that equipment out. Uh, they still have to return that property to you. Um. And there you guys go. Let me know if you have any questions about uh, spendable property, spendable hand tools uh, down in the comments. Uh, also, like, make sure you guys liking the video, liking the content as far as property-wise, all the yank, not 
all the nine two Yankee content that I put out. Uh, and this has been another episode of Soldier Talk the Podcast, and I'll see you guys in formation.